I often hear people say, I earn $40 an hour or I earn $300 an hour. That's not true. If you were paid by the hour, they could put the money in your bank account and you could stay home because you're going to pass the time anyway. My mentor, Mr. Jim Rohn said, we do not get paid for the hour. We get paid for the value we bring to the hour. In fact, he said, we get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. And he added, if you want to earn more, you must become more. But how do you actually become more valuable in the marketplace? That's what I want to cover in this video. G'day and welcome. And on this channel, I share the wisdom and the philosophies that Mr. Jim Rohn shared with me over 30 years ago. By consistently applying and executing on what he taught me, I've been able to live a life on my terms and I know that if you take to heart what I share on this channel and you apply it in your own lives, you'll be able to live a life on your terms too. Now, to become valuable to your employer or your manager, you need to become indispensable. In other words, the organization would suffer or basically grind to a halt if you were no longer there. Please note that being indispensable is different to being irreplaceable. I don't believe that anybody is irreplaceable. But by being indispensable, you essentially make yourself a vital cog in the machine. You're integral to the successful operation of your organization. So you really need to become indispensable. Now, how do you become indispensable? How do you become valuable to the marketplace? I've got five ideas that I'd like to share with you. Now, the first idea that I'd like to share with you is this, do work that matters, not work that's easy. As the CEO of a company, I can tell you, I'm interested in two things. Number one, how do we increase turnover? How do we increase sales? Number two, how do we reduce expenses? The work that is really important addresses one of those two issues. A lot of people like to think that they're busy because they're answering emails, they're doing a lot of routine administrative work, but that's not work that matters. The work that matters is increasing sales or decreasing expenses. If you can become proficient in one of those two areas, you become more valuable to the marketplace. If all you're really doing is standing on a production line and doing your little bit, you're never going to become valuable to the marketplace. So that's my first idea. Do work that matters, not work that is easy. Now, the second idea I would share with you is this, monopolize a particular skill or an attribute. And that's really important, especially in sales and marketing. As I said, all CEOs want to either increase sales or decrease expenses. My business development manager, the lady that looks after increasing sales in my organization, is the highest paid member of our team. She gets paid higher than me. And that's because I need her skills and her attributes. She is an absolute whiz at cold calling. She can get on a call, get through the gatekeeper and get an appointment. And when she gets appointments, she gets sales. And so I pay her very, very well for that skill. So that's my second idea to you. Monopolize a skill, become really proficient in something that no one else in the organization can do. My third idea that I would share with you is this. Go the extra mile in everything you do. Don't be average. My idea of average is this, bottom of the top, top of the crap. You don't wanna be there. There's a lot of people that are average. You don't wanna be average. You want to be the exception. Go the extra mile. Zig Ziglar once said, go the extra mile, there's no one on it. And that is just so true. I could count the number of people on one hand that I've employed that have gone the extra mile. So let me share that with you. Go the extra mile in everything you do. I promise you will stand out from the crowd. Employers and CEOs notice people that go the extra mile and they won't forget it, I promise you. Now, the fourth idea that I would share with you is become the right-hand person for your manager or become the right-hand person of the person you answer to. In this day and age, after COVID, there is so much churn in organizations. People are reassessing their lives, they're reviewing where they're at, and they're saying, I don't think I really want to work 40 hours a week anymore. And so if you're the 
two I see, if you're the right hand person of your manager in a senior position, when that manager moves on, more than likely the organization will look at you and offer you the position because you're valuable. So that would be my fourth point, become the right hand person. Become the person who says to your manager, leave it to me, I'll take care of it. Do you know how many people I've employed in my nearly 40 years now of running a business that have said to me, leave it to me, Willem, I'll take care of it. That's right, very, very few. So be the exception. Become the person that says, leave it to me, I'll take care of it. You will stand out from the crowd and you will become valuable to the marketplace. Now, before I share my fifth idea with you, could I ask you to like this video and consider subscribing? I put something out every week on either a philosophy or an idea that Mr. Rain shared with me, and it'd be great to have you on board. And for those who have subscribed recently, thank you. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate that you are taking time out of your life to share or listen to the ideas that I've got to share with you. So thank you for that. Now, the fifth and last idea that I would share with you is this, improve your communication skills. Now, when I talk about communication skills, the first thing that people think about is your ability to speak, your ability to present, or your ability to sell. And although that is part of communication, what I would ask you to do is become really proficient in another skill, and that is active listening. Mr. Rowan once said, God gave us two ears, one mouth, make sure you use them in that proportion. And I know that's really, really hard, but can I say, in the time that I've been in business, the people that are active listeners, the people that are good listeners, they really do stand out from the crowd. I remember Brian Tracy telling the story of a real estate agent who was trying to sell a house. It was a husband and wife, and the husband was looking at all the problems, but the wife kept looking at the window and he asked her what she was looking at. She says, I just love that maple tree standing in the backyard. And as they went from room to room, the husband complained about, oh, the, you know, the walls need painting, this needs repairing. But the wife kept looking out the window and the real estate agent kept saying, yes, but look at the view you get off the maple tree from this window. And he essentially said that for every house. When they got to the end, guess what? Yes, right, they bought it. Because that real estate agent was savvy enough not to talk, 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 but to listen. And he listened to the wife and that was a really good move because real estate agents know that when a couple come in, it's usually the wife who will make the buying decision. So that's my fifth idea become really proficient in your communication skills and especially in your active listening skills. Now, I like to provide a bonus in all my videos. And as I said in my last idea of improving your communication skills, it is really important to learn how to ask good questions, not closed questions, open questions. Open questions start with who, what, where, when. And I've put together a PDF that will allow you to get to know someone really, really well. It comes up with a number of questions which will really get people opening up to you and really giving you a really solid idea of what makes them tick. If you're interested in those questions, they're on a PDF. You can download that in the comment section below. Now, if you like this video, I know you'll like some of the other videos I've put together on ideas that Mr. Rohn has shared with me. They're on a playlist just up there. So maybe you can have a look at those after this video. So remember, we don't get paid for the hour. We get paid for the value we bring to the hour. We get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. Now, go out, use these five tips that I've given you today to become more valuable to the marketplace. If you do, I promise you will thank me later.